All right, so Bill and I just ran offshore and we're sitting about 15 miles out right now. And I tell you guys, the conditions are out here are not good. They're not what the weatherman was projected. The initial uh, two feet at about nine seconds is looking more like three and a half feet at six. And it's getting a little bit bumpy out here. But what him and I are gonna do is we're gonna try to drop down some live baits and see if we can catch some nice fish for dinner. Maybe a big amberjack, maybe a big cobia. Uh, we'll drift some lines back for some kings, but we're going to try to see if we can do something in a short window because I don't want to be out here all day getting beat up and uh, grab something to eat. Now, once we get done with that, we might possibly shoot back inshore and do a little bit of running around for some redfish, flounder, and trout. But for right now, we're going to try this offshore game. So we'll keep our fingers crossed and let's see what happens. I let this thing sit. I was looking out there. It was just hanging in the water column as soon as I went to hit it again. What did you have on there, a uh, bucktail? No, it's a vertical. Orange oh, there she is. That looks like a... That is... Oh, grouper, grouper. gag grouper. Get her in, there's a shark on her. <laughs> gag grouper. Uh, I gotta check the, uh, the season. Grouper season right now, I think. Yeah. Uh, May, yeah, we're open. We'll, we'll take a look and see if she's legal. Sorry, I got this big eight foot rod. That's okay, we got her. Yeah, let's see where that girl's at. I'll, I'll take Gag Grouper on board right there as you measure six. They only gotta be 24, they're in season. She's close, I don't know. Where are you gonna be, baby? No. You're gonna be a little short, right at 21. Well, we'll still hold her up, I'll get a picture. How about that? A little nice Gag Grouper, about three inches too short. We'll let her go back. Go ahead, you can drop her in. There you go, gag grouper going back. All right, so here's the jig that just caught that grouper. This is called an ocean cat jig. It's a vertical jig. Uh, it's one of those jigs that really flutters and comes to life on its way down. It's 100 grams, that's the weight. And it's got a really cool um, looking pattern here. And as you can see here, the stripes actually glow. So at good water depth, this thing, uh, this thing really, really does come to life and the fish can see it. And it's got a couple of cyst hooks on here, extremely sharp, and they've got some really nice, uh, nice teasers on them. So that's what he's using down there for those guys. And he's throwing 60 pound monofilament leader. All right, so let's get some bottom rigs down. Seven knot Trocar TK3 live pin fish. If she'll open up. <laughs> She'd prefer to keep a, a clamp tight mouth. That's fine, we'll get it in here up into a hard part of that cartilage. Six foot, 80 pound liter, four ounce. No roll sinker. I got one back. I'll go ahead and throw her a little bit more to the side here. So I got one there, one there, and I got a, a flat line with one of my hand tied stinger rigs. See if we can get something there. Marking some pretty good bait, 47 feet, 48 feet. I got smoked and taken right into the structure. Maybe a big grouper, Billy just got a gag. Not looking too bad. We got one more rig I gotta tie. We got broke off really quick since we got set up. So I'll do one more flat line back. <laughs> Feels uh, it almost feels bull red. A lot of head, lot of head shakes. Maybe cobia. Oh, it's coming up too fast for a uh, bull red. Be brown, be brown, be brown. It's coming up. She's gonna jump. And now she's running the surface. I don't think it's shark because I ain't got broke yet. Come on. I just want to see color. There we go, we got color. It doesn't look like a shark. Oh, it looks like a, that's a nice jack. That is amber jack. Hi, reef donkey. You big old girl. I think uh, 
I don't think she's keeper size. There you go. Let me open that bale. All right, bale's open. You can take her on up to the front. There we go. Oh, reef donkey special. It's a nice, nice amber jack here. They got a little nickname called reef donkeys. They're some of the hardest fighting fish out here on these reefs. They are really delicious too. I do enjoy eating them. Uh, a lot of the times they are eat up with parasites. So you just know you're gonna have to work through some parasites possibly. All right, there we go. Beautiful amberjack. This is an amberjack. You can tell the difference between these and the amlicos because right here, this little uh, spiny fin thing right here, as well as this one, well, mainly, sorry, mainly this one that comes up is not dark, dark brown and it's not overly pointy. Uh, the ones that are really, really high point like that and dark are the amlicos and there's no size requirement on them. Only, uh, I think you only keep 10 or 15 or something like that. But this girl here is 29 to the fork, 32 at the tail. And that is what we call <laughs> fish tacos. So I'm gonna go ahead and get her uh, brained, bled out. We'll put her in a cooler and we are definitely gonna take her home and enjoy eating this little girl. So. Thank you, Lord, for that fish. <laughs> uh, so that had to be probably the roughest and most unfun ride coming home. It was it was so choppy and so rough out there, you guys. I could probably run at a max 21 mile an hour. And from where we were, it took, gosh, it took right in an hour to get home. So uh, I'm not gonna sit here and complain, but what I am gonna do is I'm gonna take this dirty boat, head back to the house, try to get it washed down and rinsed down. I'm not gonna go too much in detail because I'm gonna take the family out on the boat. Possibly tomorrow, we'll take a look at that. Uh, but I am going to get this amberjack on the fillet table, get her filleted out, and just kind of see how she looks. Again, like I mentioned out there, amberjacks are normally full of worms, at least towards the tail portion. So I'll be interested to see if there's some decent salvageable meat. If there is, then we're definitely going to cook that girl up. So let's get out of here. I got a long ride back to Richmond Hill. All right guys, so we're back at the house and this is that beautiful amberjack that we just got through catching a little bit ago. Now, as you can see from her uh, looks here, she's a little bit different. I got some eyes still coming out of uh, the cavity. So what, do, what I wanna do is I wanna show you real quick what I do with this fish after I catch her. So the first thing I like to do is I like to humanely dispatch this fish. So what you do is just take your knife, you stick it right in here in between the two eyes. I stab it straight in and I just wiggle the blade back and forth until you hit that brain. As soon as you hit that brain, you're gonna get a nervous reaction out of the fish. She's gonna do a little bit of this, which she's not suffering at that point. That's just, again, nerves reacting. You have killed that fish and she has been humanely dispatched. So the next thing I like to do is I like to take my knife and I cut right here, all behind the gills. I cut that artery right here and then I immediately stick her head first into a live well that is recirculating to get all of this blood pumped out. Next, I do like to uh, go ahead and fill dress the fish, the big fish like this. So I'll cut her right here where the anal fin is up into, uh, into this collar right here between these two fins and I pull all the innards out. And that also allows me to see if there's any worms in here. Now she did have a few worms. So again, I'm interested to see, like I mentioned out there earlier, how many worms she has in the meat. Uh, but this size here, this is honestly the keeper size that you want. If you get into bigger amberjacks, they're gonna have more worms because they're an older fish. So we'll go ahead and set her down here and we'll go ahead and get her cut up. Now, one of the things that I do wanna talk about real briefly is my fillet knife. You guys, I have been blessed to be sponsored by Sword Fishing Products. 
So our fishing products makes a whole bunch of really cool stuff. They specialize in high quality fillet knives and this is their seven inch medium. It's got a uh, fairly stiff blade on it here. It's got a really cool anti-corrosive coating on it so it won't rust out on you. And the handle here is extremely ergonomic. I'm a gun guy and to me, you guys, this feels like holding one of my polymer handle style guns. So if, you're our, if you are interested in picking up a sword fishing knife or a sword fishing products knife, check the, uh, the link in the descriptions down below. It'll take you right to the website and you'll be able to find this one here. But again, this is the seven inch medium. So let's go ahead and get this little girl cut up here. Now, I do want to, uh, you know, with any fish in the beginning, I want to just kind of put my hands on the fish, figure out where the head meat kind of ends and begins, and just to kind of get an overall impression of where my meat is so I don't wind up wasting any of the meat. So let's go ahead and give her a nice little cut. So I'll start right back here behind the... <laughs> Got this beetle, won't leave me alone. Uh, right here behind the fin. So I'll make a nice little diagonal cut. I mean, right down the fish, just like this here. Now this knife from Sword is extremely sharp, so you do have to be very careful with it. And now we're just gonna run right down the back like this. This fish is extremely cold. Every time I catch these fish, after I clean them, I immediately put them on ice. And what I did with this girl too, once I got all the guts pulled out, I went ahead and I shoved ice in there too. That way I, I cooled down that inner body cavity there, just kind of like you would do uh, if you feel dressed deer or you do handle big game like that. So I'll go ahead and start making these cuts coming back towards me. Now, if you hear that, that is the backbone that I'm hitting. As soon as I hit that backbone, I go ahead and I start lifting up on the meat here. And then I'm just going to nice and slowly work the knife back towards me going up and over that bone. You guys see that big spinal bone right there. That's what my knife was riding and, and tapping against. And all of these little vertical uh, bones here, that's just uh, more of the vertical carcass going or the, the skeletal system going up. So once I get down to here, I will pop through right here where this anal fin is and then just work it right out the back. So now I'm just peeling the meat back and I'm trimming right up and over those ribs just like that being very careful not to cut myself and there we go this is one fillet so i'll do the same thing on the other side over here but i want to go ahead and just focus on this one side here so i'll keep her down here on the side let's go ahead and pull the skin away from the meat really sharp knife I'll let it do the cutting i'll just kind of wiggle with my left hand push a little bit slightly with my right and I'm not trying to get too close to that skin because uh, these fish do have a decent bloodline that is in that skin. And I don't want to get in there and get a lot of that bloodline. See, this is what I was talking about. So if you go really, really close to the skin, you start getting a lot of that red bloodline like that. And this does not taste good. You don't want this in your, uh, in your food. So I'll go ahead and I'll trim that down here in just a second. But for now, we want to go ahead and cut out some of these uh, pin bones that run right through the dead center of this fillet. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and just cut her straight out like that. Come over here onto this side. Now these pin bones are fairly big. They're not little pin bones like you'll get with some of your smaller inshore species. So I'll set that to the side. Go ahead and turn this over. This is where you can cut and clean up all of that bloodline. This is where, again, it helps to have a super sharp fillet knife so you're not losing a lot of that meat. Clean that up there. Clean that up there. Come across, hit that little piece just like that. Man, it feels good to have a really sharp knife. And get this one last little piece just like that. Now, let's take a look at the parasites while we're right here. Let's go ahead and cut this one last little bit of rib out. Okay, so this is all unedible meat. This is our edible meat right here. So let's see what we got. Now these parasites are white. Let me see if I can find one. This is what a parasite looks like right here. Kind of looks like a little spaghetti noodle. And what I can tell already from this fish is in this top loin, 
she doesn't have any parasites. So that is 100% clean meat, ready to go, ready to cook. We don't have to worry about cutting around or picking any out. Now here's the bottom loin, right? So she was basically sitting just like that. This was her head, this was her tail. So as you can tell on the bottom loin, she's got some parasites, right? So there's a parasite right here. So that's what that looks like there. She's got some more parasites in the tail down here. She's got some mixed in right here. You can tell. Right there, there's one there. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm not going to cook this. I'm not gonna eat this. Uh, I'm not into, into eating parasites. Now there's a lot of research and study out there that shows that these parasites do not transfer to human beings. But uh, you know what? I got a decent amount of meat off of this fish. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save this meat right here. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna cut it up into little pieces. And then I'm gonna put this in a Ziploc bag. Next time I go out on my, my next offshore trip, this will be little chum pieces to throw out and to chum up for some more fish. So again, really nice big loin piece of meat right here. This will feed easily uh, two to three people. So you multiply that times two. We got enough dinner for my, my family as well as a few friends. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and just go ahead and knock the sides off and clean off the rest of the, this fish here. But as far as the video goes and you guys, we're gonna head into the kitchen and I'm gonna show you how to take this beautiful amberjack loin and turn it into a delicious dinner. All right guys, well, welcome to my kitchen. And what I'm gonna do with this amberjack is I'm gonna keep it easy. Now, I like to cook dishes and get a little bit intricate sometimes, but sometimes you just wanna have a couple ingredients to make a really nice meal. So for this dish, we're gonna go with a little blackened seasoning and just some good high quality olive oil. Now the blackened seasoning I'm using today is a company called Coastal Badass. I'm not making this up, this is exactly what it's called, uh, but it's a, uh, a company out of Charleston, South Carolina. So if you guys are interested in picking any of this blackened seasoning up, I'll link it in the description down below. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these fillets that I've already cut up into nice uh, portion sizes here. This is about a six inch, five, six inch portion size piece here. And I need to get a good coating of olive oil on them first. So I'll use my little Misto sprayer, give them a nice little spray. And all this is gonna do is uh, allow the, uh, the blackening to, to get a, basically just something to stick to or to adhere the spice to. And also it's gonna get the edges nice and crispy. So I'll get that on just like that, smear that around. So now with the season, you can go as light or as heavy as you want. Uh, I like my stuff a little spicy. My wife doesn't like it quite as spicy. So I'll take a couple pieces and not go, not go quite as heavy. So I'll make that hers. We'll just kind of pat it around a little bit. Do a little something like that. Don't forget to get the edges. And with mine, we'll go a little heavier. Just like that. Now, I'm gonna let these fish sit here for about um, five or six minutes and just let that seasoning really kind of uh, stick and adhere to it. And while that's happening, I'll show you how I'm, we're gonna cook the fish. All right, so there's a couple different ways that you can cook these. Now, with it being blackened like this, you can cook them in the pan with a little bit of butter, you can broil them, you can bake them, you can do however you want. Now, I've got a double oven over here over my right shoulder, but we're not gonna mess with that. We're gonna keep things very simple. Now, my wife and I started having kids we noticed that uh, we were using the oven a lot more than normal to cook chicken nuggets, tater tots, french fries, all the normal kid food. And we just got tired of cooking and heating that thing up. So we were turned on to this thing by my sister. This is basically an uh, air fryer that Ninja makes. And it is perfect for cooking, you know, I mean, the amount of food that'll fit in about a 12 by 10 square space is perfect. So for just a family of a few like us, this is our absolute go-to. So what we'll do is we'll just turn it on I'm gonna turn it straight to air crisp. We're gonna cook this fish at 400 degrees and we'll just turn it on and let it heat up. So in the meantime, we'll just take our little pan here and just start laying our fish out. Now I went ahead and put a little nonstick cooking spray on the bottom here, just so it doesn't stick. And we'll set it just like that. And then that thing will let me know here in about two minutes that it's ready to go. 
All right, so while the air fryer behind me is heating up, I do want to take a quick second and thank a few people that helped get this house to be at the point of where it is. So with the remodel help that I had, Billy, Dad, g -Paw, thank you guys so much for the time, energy, and the effort that you put into this place. I know some projects weren't very easy. Some projects took a little bit more time than, uh, than others, but uh, without your help, I wouldn't have been able to do this. And last but not least, George Myers. Thank you, brother, so much for helping my wife and my family find this house. Uh, for those of you that are out there in the Georgia area and you're looking for a realtor, guys, I cannot uh, recommend George Myers with me and Madison Properties enough. Not only is George one of my good friends, he's an amazing human being, and him and his team are extremely fast and efficient, and they will get you into whatever home you are excited to, uh, to put your family into. So not only did we get this house, but also we got this house under budget, which is extremely crazy this time of life or this time in life when everything is highly competitive on the real estate side. So if you're looking for a realtor, George Myers, he's definitely your guy. All right, so I had a little last minute special request. Somebody wanted a little extra lemon pepper, so we added that to the plate here. And we're gonna go ahead and throw it in. So with these, it just simply says, add food. <laughs> so this is where you add food. You just set it on top there, close it, and that's it. It's just a very small convection oven, and that thing's gonna take about five or six minutes. Now I'm gonna watch the fish once it looks done to me, I'll pull it out and I'll show you guys exactly what that looks like. All right, so let's take a look and see where we are. Oh my goodness. I'm going right after this piece right here. Look, I'll leave the rest of that in there. Look how good that is. That's exactly what you want right there, you guys. That little bit of crispy edge there on the fish. It's just barely starting to open. As you can see, there's still good amount of moisture inside here. That is perfectly cooked. Now, if you're wondering what the USDA regulation cook temp is for, the, for fish in general, uh, right around 145 is what they recommend, but I would pull it just a little bit early because remember, as soon as food comes off of heat, it, it tends to continue to rise maybe about three or four more degrees. So let's see if I can take a bite of this without absolutely burning my mouth. I'll get a small little piece. My mouth's already watering. Mmm. Yeah, that is good. Look at that. Look how juicy that fish is right there. See how she's just kind of flaking apart, the juice coming out? That right there is a perfectly cooked piece of amberjack. So that's all I got for today, guys. Thank you so much for uh, hanging in with the video with me. It was a good time out there fishing. Although it was a short trip due to the weather, Bill and I were still able to get out there, catch that nice amberjack, uh, as well as that grouper. And I was able to uh, put a little dinner on a plate for myself as well as my family. So thank you guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Take care and I'll see you on the next one.